Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and that's why I hate that saying when people say words can't hurt you, because I'm like, yes, they can. Yes, they can. And so I would do makeovers and photo shoots with them, and I would ask them to draw a couple of words that explained how they felt before this shift happened. And most often those words were worthless, or um, not wanted, or unloved. And it was all of these perceptions that they had about themselves. Welcome back to Up Close. We are your hosts. I'm Tori. I'm her adoring, loving, sweet, kind, generous husband, Chad. He is all of those things, y'all. <laughs> Incredibly uh, humble. So, so humble. Um, says the, the model. He's so cute. No, I'm kidding. We're actually talking about beauty and from two people who come from the industry. A little bit about, about my background is I come from pageants and he is still in the industry modeling. Mm -hmm. And so this whole topic is super interesting to both of us because we think that the world has defined beauty in a variety of ways that might not be healthy and can cause a lot of insecurity and feeling like you're never gonna measure up. And I don't know, I know that it's not just a girl thing and- It's definitely not. Yeah. It's definitely not. Guys just don't tend to talk about it as much. It's something that, I mean, there's there's been occasions where a guy will ask, like, hey, man, like, how do you think I should wear my hair or this, this, and that? But it's definitely more internalized. Yeah. And there's a lot less societal pressure for it. But the, the thought is still there where people want to be attractive, yeah. you know, like, and there's still the thought of, you know, you see magazines or movies, you see these different things, and you're just like, oh, like this is what people define as beauty, where if your hair is a certain way or you're, you're symmetrical, or there's different things where you, you don't realize the deep seas it actually has on you, yeah. and it affects the way you think about yourself to where some people may be in a place where they just think that they're like not beautiful and like, okay, that's, you know, I'm not beautiful, that, it is what it is. Then some people may be in a place where they're like, oh, I'm okay, but I'm not there. But what's so interesting, I think, to me is that these people are beautiful. Yeah. And, it, and like, it, uh, under whose definition are they not? Right. It, are you going to allow someone to, subs are you going to subscribe to someone else's opinion of you? You know, and there, there's a whole self-worth underlying of what people are dealing with. And that's why I've, man, I've been playing with fire for the past six years in the modeling industry. You know, where I'm at a casting and I'm just thinking to myself, like, this guy has better hair than me. This guy has more abs than me. This guy has a better smile than me. That guy's taller than I am. He fits the clothes better. Mm -hmm. And like, and here I am, a guy where most people would say, Chad, just hush. Like, why are you worried about the way that you look? Yeah. And I, it affects me where you're in a casting, you're just beating yourself up. And it's, well, something I've been really thankful for is it's really encouraged me to dive deeper into what self-worth really is and what and, and how God defines beauty yeah. because it it challenged me in those ways where there was nights where I just, you know, if I didn't book the job, was it because I wasn't, you know, sounds stupid to say, but was I not good looking enough, yeah. you know, and my finances were tied to that. And so it really did test me in a lot of ways that really made things hard for me, yeah. but it also, in a sense, kind of purified me, which is something, a strong word that we want to talk more about with our sweet guest, Rebecca. Yes, so we do want to introduce our guest. Uh, this is Rebecca Friedlander. I wanted to make sure I said that right. She is just amazing. We've been talking to her for a little while before, and we just wish that the entire thing was on record yeah. because there's so much depth to her. She has written a book called Finding Beautiful, and I'm already just so excited to read it. She has also done 50 radical makeovers around the world. Mm -hmm. And guys, I just can't wait for you to hear more of her story and her wisdom. So welcome. Welcome. We're so glad <laughs> to have Aww, you. Thanks for having me. Yay. Um, do you want to start, babe? Yes. Define beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you like, let's jump in. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's a question that I asked a lot of people. So before doing the book, before doing the 50 makeovers, I kind of wanted to get a grid of what people were feeling about beauty in our culture today. So I did dozens of street interviews. I went to the beaches of Southern California, to Hawaii, to London, downtown, Spain, Madrid, and I would just go up to people with my camera and just be like, what is your definition of the word beautiful? And I got lots of answers. Some people said they don't know. 
Some people said, well, it's being confident and comfortable in your own skin. And as long as you're happy with yourself, then that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That was the most mm -hmm. common one. Yeah. And then I would ask them, so do you feel like our culture is doing a good job in defining beauty for women today, especially? Yeah. And across the board, they were like, absolutely not. Absolutely. And some people yeah. like break into hysterical laughter, yeah. you know? Yeah, and I was like, huh, this good. is interesting. Yeah. Like we yeah. know that we're not being presented with a, a really holistic or really interesting definition mm. of beauty but like we all still like gravitate toward beauty and then I would ask them one more question I'd be like so who's the most beautiful person that you think is like the most beautiful person in the world and guys would like point to their wife like right there Cutie. right there <laughs> and then um but like the single girls that I interviewed they were all like my mom Mm. My mom is the most beautiful person. I'm like, okay, like repeatedly that was the answer. So I was like, okay, this is really interesting mm -hmm. because we're like lacking in a really good solid definition of beauty. Because they're Ooh, not like, saying like the, the most famous supermodel when they mention beauty. They're m mentioning their mom. Like that's great because yeah. like it shows us that there's something a little bit deeper that people are hungry for right. and, and mm -hmm. looking for and connecting with when it comes to beauty. So when it came for you to actually choose people to ask about their definition of beauty, and you clearly don't have like the traditional definition of beauty. I mean, I think, I think you mentioned earlier that there's a Webster's definition. Oh, so what was that? Yes. So the word perfect mm -hmm. is really unique. In the English definition of like, if you look it up in Webster's dictionary, the word perfect is defined as to be without flaw or blemish. Mm. But if you look up the word in Hebrew, mm -hmm. the word perfect is, there's several different words, but one of them that's used repeatedly is the word shalom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that translates to perfect in our English language. But in the Hebrew, shalom means wholeness yeah. and completion and peace. It's like this holistic view um, that's completely different than our English definition. Right. So I think sometimes we're all trying to go for perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to have the perfect body, we want to have the perfect house, and we want to like have all these things in order. But really, right. maybe there's a different definition that really God's word portrays perfection a little right. bit differently. It's so interesting to me because I feel like as you were going up on the street and asking people to define it, and maybe some had a generic answer or some had, didn't know the answer, when you asked them to, dis, to, to point to someone that described beauty, it wasn't the traditional right. form. It, wasn't, it didn't match their definition. I think because we haven't fully defined true beauty. Mm. Yeah. And while that can look so different to different people, like some people yeah. it's like, it's a sunset, it's good friends, you know, yeah. all of those things are beautiful. But I think there's a hunger inside of us to really go deep into this and figure out what beauty is. I was just even thinking about how you said a lot of, a lot of the people said their mother, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, so beauty really is a reflection of love and peace. Mm -hmm. And then you also think of moms as just being like, so servant hearted. The real MVP. You know, it's like sacrifice is beauty. Yeah. You know, and I think that's such a picture of Jesus because I think of beauty as well as so distorted sometimes because we can we can look at beauty as like, oh, she's beautiful, or we can use it to discredit people. Um, I, I say that because people have for me, before, oh, she's just a pretty face, yeah. but she she isn't wise or, or whatever that might be. It's not but annoying. very, <laughs> very, it's yeah. very annoying. <laughs> but it's just like our Lord was beautiful, mm -hmm. but like we've never really seen the face of Jesus, right? But we think of Jesus and we think of our Lord as beautiful, mm -hmm. and why is that? Mm -hmm. And it's I think that's good, babe. Thanks, that's what babe. I'm talking about. <laughs> Can I drop this mic somewhere? Yeah, on my head. <laughs> Gosh. But seriously, it's like, but that love and that sacrifice is, is why God's so beautiful. So why is that, why is sacrifice and peace not a part of our definition of beauty in mm. Western culture? Yeah. Well, what I discovered was that, you know, I interviewed 50 women around the world. So went from like the Middle East to Europe to Hawaii to the States. And I interviewed women who had a story. Yeah. And at some point, there was something that shifted in their life that mm -hmm. helped them redefine the word beautiful for them mm, right. and for what they carried. And so I would do makeovers and photo shoots with them. And, and I would ask them to draw a couple of words that explained how they felt before this shift happened. Mm -hmm. And most often, those words were worthless yeah. or um, not wanted or unloved. And it was mm -hmm. all of these perceptions that they had about themselves. And then I would say, hey, what's a word that describes you today? Yeah. 
and often like worthy and clean mm -hmm. and all of these things. So then I went in and I found out the backstory of what happened to change their perception of who they were right. and, and what happened in their story. Mm -hmm. And they all had something profound to say. Dang, I, I even think of it, you know, just in terms of a lot of women, even me, it's in the Christian culture, especially it's, we can say all of those things, but when do they actually take heart? Mm. Right? So it was like, I knew all of those things. I grew up in the church. I, you know, my mom and my dad spoke so much love and life into me, but there was a point in time where I stopped believing that God saw me in all of those ways. Mm. And I remember just in a worship session a couple of years ago, just hearing, uh, a song and it was like, God sees you as like white as snow. And I was like, no way, like no way. Like that's not really how he sees me. You know, I can say that all day long, but when does it actually take heart? When do we start seeing ourselves the way God sees us? And I think that's the shift is it's really hard. Like you can hear all these things, yeah. but it's like that distance between your head and your heart. It's like, I can know it, I can read it, yeah. but when does it actually take heart? Yeah. And then we see ourselves the way God sees us. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I think that's the thing that always confuses me is that, you know, as we learn about these topics on self-worth or identity, and then at what point does someone walk by a mirror, look at themselves and not feel those same negative feelings? Like at what point, to what extent? And like getting from here to there, how did, what does that look like? Like, have you seen a common denominator in like, I don't want to say the recovery process, but the uncovering process of beauty. There it was. Is babe. he going to preach today? All I'm saying is, is that have you seen a common denominator in the way that these women, these 50 women, and actually a lot more that you mentioned, but that there's a common denominator of how they started uncovering beauty? Yeah, I compare it to a makeover. Like, mm -hmm. I love makeover TV shows. Yes. Like, I could binge watch. Oh, my like, God. Right? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, right? yeah, yeah, right? So, Shout and what chickens. they do is they come into someone, they surprise, right? Like, they surprise somebody, right. and they come in, and they're just like, okay, we're going to give you this amazing makeover. Like, we know what we're doing. We're the yeah. professionals, but you have to turn over everything in your wardrobe yeah. that we yeah. think should go. It's and they're just weird. like, oh, I don't want to yeah. do it. Like, that's my life. Like, this yeah. is my favorite bunny shirt, right? You know, yeah. like, all of these cheesy things. Totally. But you're like, it's so worth it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To actually have something that's designed for you and like, like fits and like yeah. it shows you for who you are. Right. And so if they make that choice, then all of a sudden it takes them on this adventure. Right. But they still have to keep up the process and they mm -hmm. still have to keep making those choices. So I think it's the same way with us and Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like we're able to, he comes and he's like, hand over your wardrobe, yeah. right. like all of those yeah. negative thoughts, all of those yeah. things, right? And he's like, I've got something so special for you and custom yeah. designed for who you are. You are a treasure, yeah. you are valuable. And it's like, he's a good father that speaks life over us, right? Yeah. And then we, we get to go through the process of transformation. That's the mm -hmm. renewing of our mind in scripture. That's yeah. having community around us that speak life oh, over 100%. us and help build us up instead of tear us down. How many yeah. of us have friends and we're just like, we love these people, but they tear us down all the time. Like, right. Right. Why are they your friends? You know, right. like sometimes that's part of our makeover process yeah. to be like super honest. And then it's like, okay, now how are we going to walk this out? Are we going to keep choosing to believe what he says about us? But I think it sometimes does take that process. It makes me think of Maria Kondo, you know, I, I think that's how you say your name from mm -hmm. Netflix. Have you seen that? Oh, you she's, would love it. She's yeah, so cute. She's basically, she's this, she's this really sweet woman that comes into people's lives and say they have a lot of clutter and disorganization, whether it's clothes or whatever it may be, and she teaches them how to declutter their life. Mm -hmm. And the way she goes about it is, say if she's going to help someone clean out their closet, they'll grab um, a piece of clothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a commercial. So, so they'll grab a piece of clothing and they'll, they'll hold it. And, and then she asks you, does this spark joy? Wow. And if it doesn't, then you thank it for what it did for you and you let it go. Yeah. And this is like what you're trying to promote is like basically Maria Kondo for your for inside, your you know, not the, not the external, which is fun. Yeah. I love that. And I was even thinking about what you said. And this is something that in my small group of women, I make them do. And there's a couple different things I might touch on. But the first one is all of those things. I think it First is an awareness of like what you're saying to yourself. It's like taking every thought captive. Well, how do you do that? You have to be aware of the thoughts. Like you have to be aware of what you're speaking over yourself. And you can be your own worst enemy. We all know that. And so what I get them to do is actually write down all of those things. And sometimes it's, it's a process of just taking it out of your head and getting it on paper 
to realize that it's not true. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, this is how I feel. And then physically writing it out, you know, like I'm going to cross this out and replace it with truth. And Mm -hmm. so they'll see the lie and then right below it, they'll have to find a verse that completely contradicts what they're saying about themselves and what Jesus says about them. And then as you were talking about having people to speak life over you, we actually did this in my small group yesterday and everyone was crying. It was just one of those experiences. Get a bunch of girls speaking life into each other. You're going to experience a lot of tears. Um, And so we went around the circle and we'd pick out a girl and then we would say the first two things that Mm -hmm. came to mind. Or what we did was we really tried to put it into practice of like, how does God see her? Like, what are the things that God sees in her? And we went around the circle and I think there was nine of us and we just poured life into each other. And everyone was just like, it's so hard to see myself that way. It's crazy that you see me that way because that's not how I see myself. And it's just, dang, if we could only walk in that confidence Mm -hmm. of like really and truly believing that we encompass all these like God-given qualities that make us beautiful in different ways. And I think one of the differences between following Jesus and just trying to have a positive self, you know, healthy self-image totally. is that Jesus, he took all that stuff for us. Right. Like we were all, all of those things. negative things. Like it's not just a matter of trying to talk ourselves out of not feeling good about ourselves. Like we mm-hmm. are sinners. Totally. We were bound for hell. We were all of those things. Yeah. But I remember one time I got this like picture, like I was praying and I just got this picture in my head and I was carrying all of my baggage and all of my stuff. It was like, I was holding like a bunch of dirty laundry. Yeah. And I remember like the father in heaven, like picking all of that out of my hands and putting it on Jesus on the cross. Mm-hmm. And my first thought was like, no, you can't do that. Like that's my stuff. Yeah. Like wow. I'm responsible to carry all that. And he's mm-hmm. like, no, but that's what I did for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's powerful. And so when we really realized that he came to pay the price because he loved us that much and we're worth all of that because yeah. he loved us that much. Then all of a sudden when we say yes to Jesus and we surrender to him, it's not just us trying to do it by ourselves. Like it's really him saying, okay, I rose from the dead and my resurrection power is inside of you and let me show you who you are. Yeah, that's so interesting, you know, the thought of carrying all the baggage because I feel like it wasn't until I became a Christian, you know, I became a Christian at at age 22. And so I didn't even think I had baggage at that Mm -hmm. time. I thought just, you know, you live and you learn, you go through stuff and if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger, you know? And then I started realizing that there were things that I didn't just go through as a life experience. They were following me, <laughs> you know. They were they were chained to my leg, and they were slowing me down from where I think my purpose is calling me. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I realized there are so many things that were either spoken over me or done to me, or I did, or I spoke over myself because I'm probably my biggest critic. Mm-hmm. You know, it's sometimes we mentioned this on a previous podcast that in terms of like the love languages and words of affirmation, I don't really need it. But then I realized that. I think I do because, man, like, I tear myself down. You know, it doesn't really matter what other people say, but I I do, because I do it enough, you know? And so that's always something that was interesting to me. But to, like, round out the point I was trying to make is that I've I've seen how much words can affect people, especially from a young age. And you don't, like, you know, sticks and stones and break them, you know, but, like, they actually do take a seed, and if they're watered, and they'll take full growth and they'll they'll occupy space in your brain and you need to like excavate that area you need to take that those that baggage or that dirty laundry and like drop it at his feet or allow him to take it and put it on the cross because you don't you don't even know it's there but you need to like take a measure of what's there you you may experience heaviness or weightiness you know that's glory but you don't you don't like, you can't see it until you get a picture like that, which is so cool that you got that. Cause I just thought I just wasn't feeling well. I thought I was just foggy. You know, I thought, oh, I'm just tired. Or, oh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just feeling grumpy today. I woke up in the wrong, you know what I mean? Mm. But then it realized that all that stuff was actually like my sin clinging to me, you know? Yeah. And, and I was allowing it to, you know, which is super, it's like, you know, a sticky note, you, you put, right, kick me on it, you put it on someone's back. I had all my sin, like, on my back, and I was, yeah. like, putting things. I was, like, you know, because I deserved it. <laughs> I was kicking myself, you know, which is probably worse because it takes a lot of effort to kick yourself. <laughs> I literally you know? was picturing you trying to kick yourself. It's like a dog chasing their tail. 
but words have power. I think that's so interesting. Yeah, it says life and death are in the power of the tongue. And that's why I hate that saying when people say words can't hurt you. Because I'm like, yes, they can. Yes, they can. Um, and something else I wanted to touch on, this is a little off topic, but we were talking to you prior and you were saying that you grew up and this was not a thing for you. You were the girl with jeans and a t-shirt and no makeup and homeschool that that just like wasn't a part of your journey yeah. and so I do want our viewers and listeners to hear a little bit of where that shifted for you yeah I think there were a couple of moments one of them I mean I really wanted to serve Jesus yeah. like I wanted to follow him with everything that I could and so my heart was right but I was a little misguided and so uh, one example of like a moment of breakthrough that I had I had really long hair because I would do all these theatrical and drama things. So I had hair almost to my knees. Rapunzel. And so, and I always said like, oh, I'm never going to cut my hair. It would be like cutting off my head, you know? And it kind of like, <laughs> I was like, I know. Okay. Like it was like super, I mean, that was my mentality. And I was just kind of like, oh, like I just really want to live like however God wants me. And I remember one time God was like really dealing with me with some stuff. And I was spending like extra time, like in the word and in prayer. And I remember he just spoke to my heart. And he said, it's time to cut your hair. Mm. Oh. And I'm like, you mean this Sorry, doesn't what? make you happy? Like, I couldn't hear like, you. Are you sure? I think there's a little static in the connection, God. What? <laughs> I was like, what? And then all of a sudden, so I did it. And I didn't have headaches anymore. Like, and I just, it was oh, like it this was whole way. Yeah. But I realized, like, I had made something in my life an idol. Yeah. yeah. And even though it wasn't thing. like, okay, now, you know, God told me not to wear lipstick or something. Like, it was actually the yeah. opposite extreme. But we can live in extremes and it can become an idol. Totally. And so um, when I started doing ministry, I went into churches and I would speak and I, I literally, I wanted the focus to be all on Jesus. And so I went to a thrift store and I got the it, this plainest dress that I could find. Like it was like a burlap sack. And I was mm -hmm. like, if Jesus doesn't show up, it won't matter anyway. So yeah. like, I'm just going to so make the focus not about me. And he did come and he did show up. But over a couple of years, God began to send me really strong, beautiful, amazing women mm -hmm. who knew how to dress and knew how to value themselves in that way yeah. and to represent themselves really mm -hmm. well as they were presenting stuff. And I began to realize, you know what, we can have fun with beauty. Right. We can actually enjoy this aspect of being feminine or being masculine and actually right. embrace who God says that we are. And, like, oh. and right, and as long as it doesn't become an idol, yeah. we can have fun and enjoy this. Yeah. And so I think the last thing I wanted to do was like to write a book or do a project that was like the next Christian thing that's like beauty is just be modest and be nice, you yeah. know, because I feel yeah. like there's so many ways to define beauty and I wanted to highlight some of those yeah. um, but also just say you know you can embrace who you are and have right. fun with it just don't let that be your identity so, so so what do you think are healthy ways that people can embrace it because without playing with fire you know because it can be such a thing that we start spending maybe more money than we should on the clothes or the makeup or or the gym memberships you know shout out to New Year's resolutions you know mm -hmm. it's like how can people do that in a way that's like that's like a reasonable amount not to be like that ultra conservative guy and be like oh we'll just you know be out only till nine you know but right. to keep people from you know because right now society especially out here in the west it it discourages us from things in the bible you know it yeah. discourages us from from finding identity in christ alone you know and and so how can we how can we, in a, in a very positive way, embrace beauty, but not let it become our identity? Right. I think that we need to broaden our perspective of what beauty is from a mm. biblical viewpoint. Yeah. And so, um, for instance, you know, the, one of the entrances to the temple was the gate beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. God had a place yeah. where people could walk into his presence that was beautiful. You know, if you study out the tabernacle and some of these beautiful works of art that God commissioned, right. I love that like the first time in all of scripture where it says that God filled someone with his spirit was to an artist mm -hmm. in the old temple that he wanted to create with to make something beautiful. The wow. tabernacle and so I think God loves beauty I mean he created peacocks he and butterflies yeah. and sunsets yeah. you know so all of that visual beauty is an aspect that is 
is part of what he's given us to enjoy. I think where it gets twisted is when we begin to place um, more value on that mm -hmm. than we do on knowing who we really are mm -hmm. and, and giving ourselves fully to Christ. Right, and I think of, you know, we were talking earlier about how peace is beautiful. Mm. Well, you don't ever hear about people idolizing peace, mm. right? We idolize hustle. I love me some peace. You know, like, but we do, we idolize, especially here in LA, in the West, it's like hustle, like make it happen, do all this stuff. But it's like, well, maybe that's not what God's called us to, mm. you know, like why are we not including peace and sacrifice and all those things to our definition of beauty. And like you said, where it's a whole picture of what beauty is. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can't, you know, reach or not, I don't want to say reach, but get to what is beautiful in our own life. That's so good. And I think if you think of other people like a mirror, yeah, you know, how they see you, you know, sometimes how we see ourselves, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we build our self-image based on that. But it also talks in the Word of God, of like the Word is a mirror. And we actually can look in the word and we see ourselves and we see what God says about us. Wow. And sometimes what he says is even convicting, right? Like sometimes it's like not always you're just amazing. Time. It's like 90% of the time. Right? Let's be clear. It's like 90% yeah. of the time. But it's true. Like he's making us yeah. like Jesus. Like yeah. we have a totally different goal when yeah. we look in the mirror of, of the word. So, yeah. so I think, and, and some of the things, I think there's a beauty in Jesus that the world doesn't understand as well, mm. which kind of, we have to go to the Word to see, like, okay, what does God really call beautiful? Right. You know, and, like, some of the Beatitudes, like, mm -hmm. like being hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Like, yeah. that's beautiful mm -hmm. to Him. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I love that verse yeah. because if you unpack, like, the meaning of those words, like, the pure actually means clean yeah. in the Greek. Blessed are the clean in heart. Like, yeah. we, none of us can get there on our own, but we don't right. have to. Right. Like we can ask Jesus to do it for us and right. then we walk it out with him. Right. And the word see, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. The word see, if you look at it in the Greek, it actually means to gaze with your eyes wide open at something remarkable. Mm -hmm. And so the more we embrace that purity of lifestyle and who Jesus says we are, like the yeah. more we actually get vision of God and get wow. to be excited about him and see how amazing and wonderful he is. But purity is not really something that the world values. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's again, going, looking in the word, just going, God, what do you see as beautiful? How right. can I pursue that? Right. Well, cause I just feel like everything in the Western society, et cetera, is just so countercultural, mm -hmm. you know, to like what Jesus says and what the Bible says. And like you're saying, it's like, the Bible is the only book that like you read and it reads you, you know, and it can be convicting, but it can also be so life giving. And like you said, it's like you can see where God calls you worthy. And I think that's just so amazing for the young girls to say, like, you're worthy of yeah. purity, you know, and like purity is beautiful. Um, mm, yeah, I think that's so important, too, because I was just on set working on Monday and there were three of us in a car and a gentleman, he was asking about my marriage and my friend who's about to get engaged. He asked us, he said, do you think it's possible for a guy to remain faithful to his wife? Um, and we're, you know, we were like, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I think it's like a good reminder for, for, for guys to stay in the word in that purity that it is possible. It is possible through Christ to, to remain pure. Mm -hmm and how important it is because it can really damage you to to do things out of out of out of wedlock and it sounds yeah. so christian to say that i almost <laughs> like cringed at myself but do things you know so yeah and it, it is yeah. it's you know and but he was so shocked that tori and i waited till marriage yeah. she wasn't in the car but whenever i was sharing the story he was like shocked he was like do you think that can last and yeah. i think it's just so interesting to think that that's like that's like a foreign concept, yeah, you know, yeah. to, to think that you could remain physically faithful and spiritually faithful to someone, yeah. you know, I'm like, hmm. Well, and that's part of adopting what Jesus says about beauty. Yeah. Because the world says, you know, you can just go out and sleep with whoever, whenever, yeah. and that's just an expression of your heart and it's motion and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But that's the world's definition of beauty. And that's yeah. one area where Christianity says something completely different and says, right. you know, this is what holiness means. It means to be separated to Jesus. Right. It means like, no, I'm going to choose to be for him. 
Right. Like I'm going to make life choices that follow him and put him first. Mm. And one of those things is actually in your love life. It's yeah. in your romantic life. And the beautiful thing is that we don't have to like have this perfect past or whatever. We right. come to Jesus in the the it's it's, it's level playing field because we all come to the cross and we all need him to clean us. And so we can live from that place. And yeah. it's part of our worship. Part of our right. worship is actually how we live our romantic life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen hey, to that. <laughs> it's worship inside of marriage. Can I get an amen? amen? Just saying. Anyways, we could talk about this forever, but we want to give you the floor because I know we're about to wrap up. Tell our viewers, our listeners, what you're up to, how they can get your books, stay in touch, the whole nine yards. The floor is yours. Aww, well, I would love to connect with you guys. Um, my website is RebeccaFriedlander.com, and you can pick up my book, Finding Beautiful, Discovering Authentic Beauty Around the World, and it actually has pictures of like before and after makeovers and photo shoots that I did with women all around the world, and they're like young women who really share their story, and some of them were like, maybe, like, deep stuff, like maybe they were molested in the church at a young age, you know, or maybe they just were bullied um, and always carried that with them until they had this shift in this makeover story where God like did something in their life. Um, and then it tells a bit about my story and then there's an example from scripture um, about beauty and then there's questions at the end of each chapter you can ask yourself about what do you believe about yourself. So I just encourage you to pick up a copy of the book. You can find it through my website or you can get it on Amazon or wherever fine books media. are sold. Yeah. Can they find you on social media? They can. Yep. Yeah. Rebecca Friedlander um, Productions is my Facebook and I'm on YouTube and Instagram and you can find all that from my website too. Awesome. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much for coming. It truly like blessed our heart and I hope that it blessed our listeners and viewers as well. Yeah, I, got, I have some homework. so. Yeah, we have our own self-discovery and we'll be reading this book. I'm so excited to read through this and see all the pictures of the women and their beauty. And I'm sure I will learn some stuff about myself too. So anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we love you. We hope that this blessed you in some way. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>